Happy Monday everyone, this is Martha with Nature Niche and this week for our third installment on um, Nest Box Basics, I want to talk to you about Nest Box competitors and invasive species. Um, last week we talked about protecting Nest Box from predators, but you also need to be prepared to deal with um, species that are not your intended target species that just want to use that Nest Box as well. The Migratory Bird Treaty Act um, protects our native um, bird species and you can't harm or harass native species including their active nests and eggs. So um, I want to talk a little bit about house wrens. This is a native songbird species that will often um, want to usurp nest boxes from perhaps your other target species. So this is the uh, Cornell Lab of Ornithology's Nest Watch website, all about bird houses, and they have a whole section on managing nest box competitors. And so house wrens are a native songbird species. They're this plucky little um, bird that prefers shrubby, uh, forested habitat, and they're small enough to get into the nest boxes intended for um, tufted titmice, bluebirds, chickadees, nuthatches, and tree swallows. We can take a closer look at this bird. This is uh, Cornell Lab of Ornithology's All About Birds website on the, on the house wren. And um, this bird is very territorial and it will evict larger birds um, already attempting to nest and it will take out their nest materials, it will boot out eggs, um, it sometimes kills nestlings and kind of chases out the, the adults and will usurp the nest box. This species is protected by the Migratory Bird Treaty Act and it's illegal to remove um, nest materials. So let's take a look at what those look like for this bird. Now I'm over another great resource website is the Cialis.org. Uh, lots of bluebird information, but it has great information about um, other nest box species as well. So this is what the nesting material of the house wren looks like. Lots of small twigs. Um, it's also illegal to remove the eggs, nestlings, or the adults. So some options you have um, for dealing with house wrens include waiting until after they've raised their brood and um, you can move the box away from the shrubby habitat that they prefer. So at least 50 feet away, 200 to 300 feet away from shrubby wooded habitat um, is best. You can place another box or two in prime habitat so they're less likely to use um, boxes intended for other species. Um, you want to have these um, kind of house wren designated boxes at least 300 feet away. Um, you don't want to, to crowd a, a single nest box for your target species. Um, and this is especially true in marginal habitat for eastern bluebirds, for example. Um, and there was a study that showed that wrens prefer um, certain color houses. So this study indicated that house wrens had a preference for um, green and red colored boxes over other colors, um, especially white. So if you're trying to attract them to nest in a different location away from a, another a target species nest box, you might consider um, Hollywood houses that are already those preferred colors. Another thing you can think about um, as far as nest boxes go is avoid using um, nest boxes. If you know you have a, a pretty solid house wren population, um, avoid using nest boxes with slot openings. So the Peterson style that has the, the bigger opening on the front or um, these slot style houses, while they have their advantages, um, this bigger opening does make it easier for house wrens to get those larger twigs um, in, into the box for their nesting material. 
Uh, you can remove dummy nests of this species. So those are loose twigs um, that are filling the box, but there is no um, cup that's lined with feathers or fibers or has eggs in it. So you want to uh, watch your nest box if it is filled with twigs for three weeks. And if there are no eggs, you can consider that um, nest not active or a dummy nest and you can remove them legally under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. Other birds likely won't use um, the box if it, is, if it does have a house wren dummy nest in it. So you wanna take the twigs away from the box. You wanna make it harder for the house wrens to refill the box. You don't wanna just drop them um, on the ground right underneath. And uh, it's important to remove nest material at the end of the nesting season um, because next year having that nesting material might attract, you know, the twigs and stuff would attract um, house wrens again. Um, you can also think about uh, using a wren guard. So that is something that attaches to the roof um, and it comes down and you want it to come down past the entry hole of the box and stick out about two and a half inches. So what you're trying to do is disguise the front. So you can even do this temporarily with cardboard while you um, make a more um, sturdy wood version for the front of the box and you're disguising that entry hole to make it harder for um, the wrens to observe what's going on with the other bird species going in and out and um, making it harder for them to get in here and get their large sticks um, into that opening to build their, their own nest once um, another species has started to nest. So some key things about that um, you want to install a wren guard um, after your desired bird species has <clears throat> committed to the box. So um, maybe even waiting as long as having them lay one egg before you install this wren guard. Um, and you don't want to do this during incubation or the hatching period, that's too late. Um, because if the parents refuse to enter, then your eggs or the babies will die. So you need to be careful about this technique um, and really put it up once that first egg is laid and watch and make sure the parents are accepting um, of the, the wren guard. Then you want to remove it after, uh, for example, bluebirds reach four to seven days old um, because you don't want it to interfere with them fledging and being able to leave the box you can wait a little longer for chickadees and titmice. Um, you wanna be in that 10 to 14 day range. But basically trying to help your target species um, get a good jump start on their nest, get those nestlings larger um, so that a house wren is less likely to usurp the box. So here um, is a nice drawing. Again, this is on the Cialis.org website. It has a whole section on wren guards. Um, but you can see that this piece is attached. There's two and a half inches here so that the adult birds can still gain access to the entry hole. Um, you may even need to put side pieces on here um, to help uh, like basically wrap the whole front of the roof um, and, and disguise that entry point. And here's another website I found with some nice um, installed examples of what wren guards can be um, but yeah you can see they they cover that entrance hole this one has the side pieces on it um, for roofs that really hang off quite a bit out in front of that entry hole so thinking about other potential nest box competitors bees may be an issue um, you don't want to remove those without professional help, especially Africanized bees. Um, they're becoming more common in the United States and they're very aggressive. So make sure you seek professional help in getting those removed from your nest box. Um, paper wasps, you can 
remove those um, with a with a tool if you see them just starting to form they're usually not an issue in boxes with actively nesting birds and if you're monitoring your boxes um, you should catch them early on if you do find a well-established paper wasp nest you can um, leave it until fall and remove when activity ceases just remember, you never want to spray insecticides into a nest box. You don't want those chemicals in your um, nest box. Mice uh, will also use nest boxes mostly over the winter. It uh, tends not to be an issue um, during the active bird nesting season, but you do need to clean the boxes out um, early spring before the birds start nesting. And squirrels can also be um, a problem they sometimes um, will use nest boxes in their breeding season overlaps with um, the birds nesting season so it's best to wait if you can um, until the squirrel nesting attempt is finished and then clean out the box that usually takes about 60 days um, and I wanted to show you uh, again the Cialis.org website has a whole um, page detailing flying squirrels and nest boxes in particular. Flying squirrels are often rare in many states um, and they and their nests are protected by some state laws. So I would consider yourself lucky if you end up with this nest box competitor um, in your birdhouse and if it continues to happen consistently you might consider moving your nest box um, so that and, and get it so that there's a predator guard underneath it um, and located away from tall trees um, where squirrels can, can launch from. So at least 10 feet um, for most squirrels, it might be up to 50 feet when you're talking about um, the very agile flying squirrels. And then I also wanted to point out on um, Nest Watch's website, they have a great section on managing invasive species. So in particular, um, house sparrows and European starlings. So I want to take a quick look. We'll go to their species page. Here is um, the house sparrow, or sometimes referred to as the English sparrow. Um, you can see the male has the rusty patch here. Um, and the, the dark black around the eye and the um, chin and the female um, has, has lighter um, coloring. And then the, and, and these are, even though it's sparrow, they're actually an old world weaver finch. So um, these guys sometimes give our native sparrows a bad rap, but our native sparrows um, are not nest box competitors. European starlings are um, larger dark birds with um, a metallic sheen and lighter speckles. And both of these species are um, invasive and uh, they were introduced uh, to the United States in the 1800s and they outcompete our native songbirds um, that need cavity nesting sites. So there are a couple of different kinds of um, control that you can implement. Um, passive control, you can do things like placing your nest boxes away from human habitation. Um, in particular, house sparrows like to be near human buildings. Um, and away from um, agricultural fields, starlings really has abundant grain and that's a big attractant to that species. So you can put your box where you're less likely to find these invasive species. You can also avoid um, feeding the invasive species. So house sparrows like millet, cracked corn, um, and milo, and they I would avoid using inexpensive seed mixes where these ingredients are plentiful. Uh, European starlings like black oil sunflower um, so you can if you have a big influx of this species try feeding just safflower niger um, and nectar for hummingbirds if you are um, feeding mealworms um, and suet you want to put those into um, feeders that 
um, have size restriction so that uh, the European starlings won't fit, but you can still feed your smaller birds. You can also use um, exclusion and keep your starlings out through uh, managing uh, portal size. So I want to show you that. Um, there. Um, again, back on the Nest Watch website on their um, features of a good birdhouse, they have an excellent graphic that I refer to a lot. Um, the different entryway sizes and note that a European starlings, the, the smallest hole they can fit into is one and nine sixteenths inch. So um, our blue bird houses with an inch and a half opening, they can't get into and anything smaller. So um, nest boxes for smaller species like tufted titmice, nuthatches, um, wrens, chickadees, and our bluebirds, um, the, the starlings shouldn't be able to access just by entry hole size. Unfortunately, um, house sparrows, they can fit into holes down to an inch and a quarter. And so um, they can get into our bluebird boxes, um, things for uh, tufted titmice. Um, if you are offering a box with an inch and an eighth opening for house wrens and chickadees, that the um, house sparrow should not be able to use. So that um, exclusion is important to think about. And if you have boxes up for those smaller species that the um, house sparrows can access, you're going to have to um, do some active management or other management strategies to um, help um, keep them um, from using the nest boxes. You can also uh, try using open platform nest ledges, um, you know, and then the smaller boxes that the house sparrows can't access. You never want to have perches on your boxes. That's a great place for the house sparrows to the male to sit and claim his box and call to females. Um, if you have decorative boxes up with these characteristics and you're, you're not going to manage your boxes, take the floor out um, or plug the entry hole so that the species doesn't use those. You can also um, plug up your boxes and um, like with a um, drain plug um, until the migratory birds, if you're trying to target a migratory bird species, plug them up um, until those species arrive because European starlings and house sparrows are around year, year round. Um, and so the downside to that is our native songbirds like chickadees, titmice, and nuthatches also have to wait to be able to gain access to boxes. So. I think this might be best used if you have purple martin housing um, and you want to um, decrease these invasive species using those particular um, nest boxes. You can also um, use deterrents like sparrow spookers and monofilament options to scare away the house sparrows. So this is an example from um, my, my friend's bluebird box, she has a halo structure above the box with fine line um, weighted down with washers. And house sparrows don't like that, um, like flying into or having that line around, but our native songbirds um, don't seem to mind. So uh, the halo is one option. Um, again, on this, uh, Cialis.org website, they talk about um, a monofilament setup that you can do with fishing line. So let me show you. I have a bluebird box rigged with that. So this is my bluebird nest box um, and I had a male um, house sparrow staking one out last year. So I pulled the box down for a few days and then um, rigged it up with the uh, monofilament setup that was suggested on the 
um, SciAlice.org website. So that basically involves running um, light fishing line. I tied it up to the top and ran two strands across the roof, down the front of the box, under the floor, and tied it back behind my mounting flange. Then I also placed um, eye hooks, four of them, one in each corner of my um, predator guard on the front of the box, and ran fishing line in a square around the entrance. And then we added small screws and strung fishing line weighted with washers down the front of the box. You can even use push pins if you want to make um, another like stringy place that will help keep um, the male house sparrows off of the top. But this was successful for me. Um, the, the male house sparrow left the box alone and I did end up having a brood of um, four eastern bluebirds fledge out of this box. So another um, house sparrow deterrent option for your box is a sparrow spooker. And um, again, the Cialis.org website has some great example photos and illustrations, but Basically, you have um, some sort of vertical piece off the top of your box with dowels hanging over the roof and then use um, half inch by about six inches long um, like shiny mylar tape um, to float above the box and flutter and spook away the um, house sparrows. They seem to be more sensitive. Um, to the reflective tape and our native songbirds um, seem to um, you know adapt pretty well tolerate that so there's another option for trying to keep um, house sparrows out of your uh, native songbird um, nest boxes I also um, wanted to talk a little bit about active control measures. So these are hands-on, um, more aggressive techniques for managing um, house sparrows. You can um, remove their nests. So house sparrow nests tend to be very messy, um, made out of fine um, vegetated materials. The grasses often like come up and hang over um, the nest itself, there's often string and cigarette butts and pieces of plastic and other trash um, woven in. They're very messy looking nests compared to something like the neat, tidy, low cup that um, uh, bluebirds and tree swallows, for example, make. And so um, once you feel comfortable with your nest identification and you can also watch closely what birds are coming in and out of the box, you are allowed to remove um, nest materials of the house sparrows because they're a non-native invasive species and not protected by the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. Um, you can do that. The downside to that is it may trigger them to usurp a box nearby that has another native species attempting to nest. You can also um, do something called incubation fake out, which is where you trick the birds into incubating eggs that will never hatch. So um, what you can do is one at a time, take out the eggs, shake them. That's called egg addling. Um, you can freeze them. You can rub oil on the outside. You can poke a pinhole or you can boil them. Um, and then mark them so you know which one you've treated, put it back in the nest, take another egg out, so that you have them all um, be non-viable. And what you're trying to do, do is delay the house sparrows long enough that they'll, um, um, they'll, they'll kind of stay incubating those eggs while your other native species and other boxes are um, raising their broods. Uh, house sparrows may still try nesting um, and they may try taking over an occupied site still. Uh, and then the most hands-on and one that just isn't for everyone is um, trapping. 
And so where populations are high though, it may be necessary to trap the invasive species and humanely um, kill the, the adults um, or, or the nestlings. Again, the nestlings aren't protected. So if you are monitoring closely, you can get them at the nest and egg stage. If they get too far ahead of you, you may have nestlings to dispose of. Um, I know some folks who just take the nest way well from, away from the box, put it on the ground, and let predators or nature take its course. Um, for trapping the um, adult birds, um, there are traps that you can place inside boxes. So let me show you. My friend brought her Van Erp trap um, to show at a workshop we held this weekend. So this is a Van Ert trap, and um, this is what it looks like when you would go to install it in the box. Um, this you want to line up with the entry hole, and then there are places to mount it with screws to the front panel of the box. This is what it looks like from the side when it's set, um, and so the bird would come in through the normal entry hole, land on um, the bar and then trip the trap to flip up. So that's what it looks like. And this um, hole is small enough that once the bird's in the box, trips this, it can't get back out um, that entry hole. So when you're using these kinds of traps set inside boxes, um, you have to check them hourly to make sure you have not accidentally trapped a native species um, because um, doing, doing that is against the Migratory Bird um, Treaty Act. So you have to have good ID skills, make sure you know that you have an invasive um, house sparrow, and you have to be very, very responsible with this type of um, trapping control. It's not for everyone because then you have to humanely euthanize the adult birds. Um, there are some raptor rehab um, facilities that will take humanely euthanized um, adult house sparrows um, that, that haven't been euthanized with chemicals. Um, some places may take it live. You certainly would want to have that all figured out um, before you begin uh, trapping regime. And like I said, some people just, this is not for them, and that's okay. It is important if you put up nest boxes um, to make sure that you're not allowing invasive species to reproduce. This only makes um, competition worse for our native songbirds. And I wanna end by showing you one more very helpful, um, oops, one more helpful, nest watch page um, they have this nest box troubleshooting guide you can download it or just look at it um, on their website but this will help you um, it has problems you know what you might find going on or encounter with your nest boxes some ideas about what the cause might be and then um, some steps you can take what can you do to resolve the problem I hope that helps you uh, be the best nest box landlord you can be. Have a good week.